Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox, the instructor of the Big Data Applications and Analytics course uh, here. Um, we are going through uh, the introduction to the course, which is um, consists of uh, five lessons. This whole thing is one unit. Uh, this is the fourth lesson, which is going through the actual um, units of the course, telling you a little bit about each unit. And we're on our, there are three lessons that go through the units. We just finished the first of those lessons, and now we're on the second of those lessons, doing a roughly of one third of the units, presumably. Uh, then, and this is the final slide of this, uh, this particular lesson, which is um, just the first uh, few sections of the class. Then we have four units on. Um, the X informatics physics use case, which is focused entirely on the discovery of the Higgs particle, although a lot of the discussion is pretty general. And we use this as an opportunity to discuss general counting experiments. Physics just counts a number of times so certain thing happens. And that's a very general experimental technique. And it's described by a certain type of statistics which we discuss. And these are red things here are where there's software which is, I say, Python in the actual courses, um, actual slides. Although you can do all of this in Java. And then we discuss um, looking for the Higgs particle and introduce the whole concept of counting and the errors in counting. Um, how the informatics of, of this whole process. We have some nice pretty pictures because uh, physics is, has very large instruments, accelerators, and uh, and uh, experiments which analyze the results of ex of, um, of experiments, which is for those accelerators accelerate protons or antiprotons or ions or what have you to high energy, and they crash to either together or they crash with a fixed target. We have a discussion of event counting, including, I say, the software. We discussed some fundamental concepts and statistics, random variables, how you apply them to physics, and the important concept of normal or Gaussian distributions. Then we have an introduction to random numbers uh, with generators and seeds, because some uh, random numbers are actually generated numerically by uh, generating a sequence uh, by obscure um, iterative method, which is guaranteed to produce random answers. Sort of remarkable that works, but it does. We discuss uh, particular distributions, the binomial distribution, the Poisson distribution. We discuss the Monte Carlo method, which is a, an essential way of um, doing simulations of what you might get. In the case of um, the Large Hadron Collider, it produces as many events by Monte Carlo as it actually observes from the accelerator. The Monte Carlo events allow you to interpret what you observe experimentally, because they allow you to generate events which you then look at in your apparatus and see. And as you know what you generated, you can see what your biases, your analysis method, or your apparatus produces. We discussed the so-called central limit theorem, which is a critical uh, part of statistics. And the so-called accept-reject method, which is a way of uh, generating things with arbitrary distributions. So that's the physics unit, which is uh, also a reasonably sophisticated discussion of practical statistics. And that's the end of uh, this lesson. Thank you very much. The, uh, remember, we have two more lessons discussing the last uh, um, uh, two parts of the course. <coughs>
volunteers in an open fashion, uh, because NIST only does open things. It's trying to do things of general value to industry and academia. I would say most of the people involved in this were from industry with a sizable number from academia. There were various working groups, uh, definition of taxonomies, in particular that defined what big data was, and we'll discuss that. The so-called reference architecture, which describes the uh, setup of, compu of computing subsystems. A very uh, effective group on security and privacy, and a somewhat difficult group because it was dealing with the future, the technology roadmap. And that one had trouble because it had to do with the future when even the current situation was still being defined. Uh, the work which described after that came from this uh, subgroup, requirements and use cases, which I was one of the co-chairs of. Then those 51 use cases were divided into broad areas, government, commercial, defense, or national security, healthcare and life sciences, medicine, biology, deep learning and social networks, uh, so-called research ecosystem like accelerators. Uh, the astronomy and physics had lots of use cases. Environment, Earth, and polar science had lots of use cases. And we should have had more, but we only had one energy use case. We go through the actual use cases, and then we go through their features. And I label the use cases by nifty characteristics. Um, and as part of those features, I discuss aspects of the features. Like I use that as an excuse to discuss the difference between SQL and so-called NoSQL. Uh, traditional object relational databases and other things like HBase or Big uh, Big Table, which uh, uh, sort of got whose development got spurred by the web, and I go through uh, other classifications such as pleasingly parallel, local machine learning, geographical information system users, and so on. And that's done in these. That's this last. Uh, Unit of the uh, use case survey um, section. So remember, we have sections, units, lessons. And um, after that uh, sort of pretty difficult, uh, or at least um, robust uh, section on uh, use cases, because it's full of detail, which is not easy to to work to. Uh, to cope with, we have what I call the side MOOC, discussing this little software called PlotViz, uh, which um, we're actually re-looking at to see if we can't do it in an easier fashion using modern web technology. And it, but this is a Windows technology application. It's got some motivation introduction to its use, and then we go through five examples uh, with various. Um, very simple things like cubes and structured data set. Then we have sort of really more complicated cases, proteomics, and how you can look up a couple of them. Um, you can look in a synchronized fashion at different, um, the same data set. Well, actually, you're looking at the, the you're synchronizing the rotations, because in a 3D viewer, you can rotate them. If you want to, if you say, take a data set in 3D and classify it in two different ways, as you browse one way, you might want the other. A way of classifying it to, to actually rotate in the same fashion so you can compare the classifications in more detail. Then we go through features of PlotViz and a larger data sample. And then we go through the final tools and examples um, which, uh, which are given here. So this is a reasonably uh, useful piece of software. It's not actually a key part of this course. It's just useful uh, when uh, looking at some of the results to use plot this, particularly for clustering, because clustering labels things, and if you actually can see it in three dimensions, the human eye is able to pick up things much more clearly than uh, 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 other ways of, dis of processing uh, data. All right. Here we have the next units, which are a section on. So this is one section. That section has three units. And it's for the use case of e-commerce, which I sometimes call lifestyle informatics. And it actually discusses in great detail recommender systems, which are key technology 
so that when you're watching uh, Netflix, it, uh, it can give recommendations for what you want to look at, or when you're buying things online, that's a more common case probably. It can recommend to you what you think you might look at, which it does by very clever techniques which relate you to other people and see what other people did. And so they allow you to make the best, the best use of your time. And I say this supports all these things like the so-called long tail, that um, it allows you to find difficult, uh, I mean, not so common things because you are near somebody else who found something rather uncommon to be very valuable. And uh, we point out that all these things are optimization problems. And you could say most of the world is um, an optimization problem. And uh, after that general discussion, we go through uh, the general definition of what a recommender system is. We go through this nifty uh, system, um, website called Kaga, which hosts all sorts of competitions, including the famous uh, Netflix competition. Uh, we give many examples of where recommender systems are used, which I say includes Netflix. Netflix has a bunch of slides about how they do what they do. And they have what they call consumer data science, which is what underlies Netflix. And uh, then we have a recap of what a net recommender system is, uh, more examples. We formulate them in the so-called vector space model, and we actually discuss uh, the the, we actually, this is also in the motivation. We discuss how, how in these uh, problems you take uh, systems, map them into spaces, and then you look at distances, especially distances in that space. And some spaces are vector spaces and have scalar products, others don't. Then we have, uh, there are multiple um, recommender systems, so called user based, item based, content based. And uh, collaborative filtering is a particular approach to recommender systems, but a very powerful, important approach. And they're built on Kate nearest neighbor methods. And we also use this as an excuse for discussing high dimensional spaces, because these things here are in the space which is of size um, uh, equal to the number of items or equal to the number of users. And in each case, they're not enormous, whether they're uh, Billion or uh, 10 million, I don't know, but uh, that big. Now we have these so-called side MOOCs, and in this case, it's discussing these technologies, uh, and in particular, how to do k-nearest neighbor algorithm in Python or Java, how to do visualization of, of the results, um, testing that algorithm. We discussed clustering. I remember that's why I told you that's why I wanted to introduce PlotVis before we did this section. Clustering is a technique which is broadly used in lots of cases and effectively classifies the world into points that are near each other. Because a cluster is a group of points that are near each other. Sometimes it's obvious what a cluster is because all the other points are far away. Other times it's just some sort of gray classification where uh, there is no. Um, um, there's no dramatic difference. There, there's just a smooth variation, and you're just finding points near each other. Um, so we look at clustering uh, in the recommender system case, and then we discuss that in set multiple clusters, more than three. We look at the uh, general aspects of clustering, including local optima, and we look at the general issue of heuristics in uh, computer science algorithms. Heuristics are very important. They're methods which are not precise methods, but they're methods that actually work. So anything that works should be looked at uh, thoughtfully. 